Hi guys, Oliver here. Today I'm going to show you how I'm creating photographs of images uh, with refraction. What does it mean? Well, it's basically images like this one here or this one here. We are simply placing water droplets and objects and uh, putting something behind that object to get a mirror image of that object behind inside the water droplet. I mean, you see it here. And I'm going to do that with rather inexpensive or no specialist equipment. So we're going to improvise a lot. Um, a few basic items. Of course, my camera. I'm choosing a crop camera over the full frame because in combination with my 100mm f2.8 macro, the old, one, the old one here, it gives us a larger magnification. So a smaller sensor has actually an advantage over the full frame. We're going to put that all on a tripod. And I am going to use a shutter release just because that's going to make it a little more convenient for me. Okay, in terms of lighting, um, I do have flashes, but we're not going to use them today. Instead, we're using this little torch here and uh, just using a rubber bond. I'm putting that on my Gorilla Pod. We're going to use this. And a second piece of light will be that little video light here. Um, people were asking me last time which one it is, so here it is, and you get it at uh, yeah, the online shop named after the big river. Um, it's run on six batteries, but be careful, it's eating them, it's really draining the batteries. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of specialized kit today. Uh, we need something where we can hold our items in place. I have these little card holders, so nothing fancy with a gooseneck. I wish I had, but I haven't, so we're going to improvise. We have a little crocodile clip, that'll do the job. Um, maybe from the last video, you know my little mini tripod with my special rubber bond attachment here. We're going to use that one as well. And, of course, we're using a few flowers. It just happens that I have a few here, they're almost dead, so it's about time that we're making good use of them. Okay, enough talking. Shall we write dive into the action? Yes, let's do that. Okay, because um, I said we're gonna focus on flowers today. Um, first of all, we need some object to place the actual droplets on it. Why don't we simply choose a petal of one of the flowers here? Let me just pick one. chosen this one here and uh, now let's see if we can put it in place where we actually yeah, are in a position to put some droplets on it. So I'm taking my little crocodile clamp here. What can help is if you are using a little blue tuck or anything to, yeah, to, to place it more properly. Um, I did it the wrong way around, so the back side up which is basically when we are putting the droplets inside and uh, we're not getting any reflection from an item behind. So when we're having it uh, upside down, it might help to put the droplets actually on top of it, which is what we want for demonstration purpose today. Good, let's see if we can put some droplets on it. What I got here is a little syringe with a needle, blunt needle, so I don't hurt myself and uh, yeah. It helps. Um, it also works, just to demonstrate you that, with a pair of tweezers. So you grab it here and then you can actually release droplets on the petal itself. Can you see it? Yeah, just about. So it does work, but with a little more accuracy, I'm choosing... Yeah, I'm not just using the syringe here. Good, so let's start and... Let's see if we can actually get something arranged. So this is the hardest bit now, and it also takes the longest time of it all. I'm 
I'm not happy with that first one, so let's see if I can remove it and maybe place it a little more the way I like it. Uh, once I get right, I'm not happy because as you can see already, it creates a different uh, refraction than the other two. So I'm removing that one again. This time, let's just see if we can put one a little closer in here. Maybe add a little. That one as well. And here. Until I am quite happy of what I have. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point. In the next step we need something for the background. Why don't we start for a demonstration purpose with uh, one of the smaller flowers? Um, when I say smaller, I will demonstrate you the difference. So a small one and a big one. The big one will make it way easier um, to create a nice backdrop. But we're getting there in a moment. So first of all, <coughs> that needs to be attached to something. Good. And now we are putting it behind our droplets. <coughs> oh, now look at this. Already got the right height. And what we're doing now, I am I am adjusting it until I do have the reflection in the droplet where I actually wanna see them. We also need to play a little with the distance getting closer to the subject and getting further away. And the difficulty here is when you're getting too close then uh, the lens does not have any chance to create a lovely bokeh in the background. So too close is not good but too far away is also not good especially when we're having a smaller size, size flower because it um, yeah, does not properly fill the reflection in the droplet and it also may not fill the entire background. So playing around with it until we are happy. Good, next step, we're turning on our light. And now I'm gonna make sure that I'm only illuminating the background. Uh -huh. When you see what happens here, leave it as it is, but you can see the difference. So all the light is thrown onto the background and we only have a little bit here in the foreground just because I want to get uh, make the colors of that petal that uh, lovely purple I want to make it pop a little. Go we're checking our settings and taking the shot. There we go. All right what I also do because as you can see we have a very shallow depth of field here I simply take a little series of shots with different focus points. Okay, after I've lost the first setup, I simply made a second one. You see guys, patience is key again. So I'm putting my, my backlight in. Let me show you this. Yeah, looks already pretty good. i now light the foreground up a little. Too much from a distance like this. And shoot. Final shot and I'm happy for the first one. Now I want to show you the importance of changing a backdrop. We're taking that little flower off here first, simply by doing that. Um, that rubber bond here died. Put a new one on quickly. Now this beauty here goes back into the waist. And I said, it is important to have a larger flower. Well, it's not really important, but it makes your life easier. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to demonstrate you what happens when I'm replacing a small flower for the backdrop, now with a larger one. I really should have cut that. But I did. All right. Oops. I'm not changing anything in 
the foreground but we're putting a fresh background in place. Now you see what happens when I now, when I now start rearranging that. Yeah, it's pretty centered, can go a little deeper. Yes. And now the backdrop a little back. Bit of color gradient doesn't do any harm. Yep, that should be all right. The same, my torch is now full on the flower in the back and only a bit of, bit of light in the foreground for taking the shot. And this is it. Good, part one is done. Well, as you can see from uh, the comparison of these two images, the smaller flower doesn't give you as much as, uh, as as much space to play with with distance to create a nice bouquet and to fully fill the backdrop. If you have a larger flower for the background, that makes your job way easier. And I think uh, these two images here and the difference between demonstrate that pretty well. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning that we are not limited to flowers. To demonstrate you that, let me try a little experiment here. I hope it's gonna work. Turn that on. Bring a little light in, as you can see what I'm doing. And I'm coming in with a new background. Okay, for now this is as close as I can get without ruining my setup again, a little recomposing, focusing, and this is what we got. <laughs> so, as you've seen, we are not limited to flowers. I mean, uh, the limit is really your imagination and sometimes a tiny little yellow rubber duck will do the job. As always, I'm now trying to, I'm now transferring the images on the computer and give you a little slideshow of the images of what we've done right now. I'll be back afterwards. are some quite representable uh, results. I'm pleased with it. What's more important, I think, uh, let's do a little summary. So, the backdrop, the larger the subject in the background is, the easier it makes your job at the end. I mean, uh, if the flower is too small, I tried it with daisy even, but it's really too small and you're not filling the entire frame, the entire backdrop. And uh, the larger it is, the easier it makes your job. Play with the distance around. You don't want to get too close to your subject because you don't get any distance to create a lovely bouquet in the backdrop. Don't get too far away because uh, you won't fill the bubble with the refraction with the mirror image of what you want to put in there. Very important I think is what you've seen that I was with that little torch only illuminating the backdrop itself, the flower itself. If you need to put some light into the foreground, use a separate light, use a flash, whatever it is. But most important, the backdrop needs to be well illuminated. Apart from that, as you've seen, no specialist kit, no, no really expensive gear. I mean, uh, your kitchen is usually a, a great source for finding objects which you can use in your little improvised home studio. So, 
we're at the end for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I inspired you to uh, take some refraction photographs. As always, thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.